The end is never the end. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Like to skip. I don't want to skip. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, oh, no. how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. He got up, okay. Oh, the sensitivity, hold up. Can I change that? His acceleration amount. Oh no, that's mouse acceleration. I'm an idiot. I moved. I moved so fast. Okay, that's fine. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The meeting room. Actually, is there subtitles for this game? Um. So you guys can understand better. Let's caption. There we go. All right, meeting room. Where's the meeting room? I move so quick. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What happens if I go in the door on the right? Do I go in the door on the right or do I go in the left? I kind of want to like defy what it's telling me. <laughs> I want to defy it already. Oh no. Chad, I don't know which one I want to do. Do I be a rebel or do I go? Macy, don't laugh at me. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. All right. What do people want? Things? Money, more money. Things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs about things and money. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going to up to his office, right? He said go to up. Okay. Can I touch this? Can I do anything to it? No. Okay. <gasps> 
a broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. <laughs> no reason to still be here. Oh no. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What if I want to go downstairs? Downstairs to the office. Nothing? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Oh no! Admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. Chat. It can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. <clears throat> he just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so what? much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he Wait, how did I, I just went in a circle? Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about this is weird. describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd <laughs> and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this I was a dream. <laughs> so he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Oh, God. I am okay.
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I'm real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, God. I wasn't prepared for this. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. <laughs> she arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her what place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the <laughs> sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. I killed myself! He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. <laughs> and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? Is it gonna, that's not going to be the ending every time, right? I want to push the buttons. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. He missed a memo. All right. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Wait, I entered the door on the left. I entered the door on the left last time. We're going right side this time. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And these these rooms are messy. I want to go in the doors. All right. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Do I get a drink? What if I want coffee? Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here oh. you sit <laughs> looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. What the heck? I can't get a drink? Okay. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on <laughs> creepy and reflected poorly <laughs> on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. What? <laughs> I kind of don't want to leave. I just want to see what else he says. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. <laughs> but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> what? But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Okay. 
Do I take the... Do I take it? That looks way spooky. Do we defy? Or do we go? Mm -hmm.